Your votes are being counted as the future of our nation is decided tonight. From the local races all the way up to Obama versus Romney, tonight we bring you the area's only local election coverage in HD here on the Late Edition. Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Queso. And I'm J.B. Buno. Thanks for joining us here on the Late Edition in High Definition. What a night it is. Results are still coming in. We're going to bring you the very latest on the presidential race later on in the show. But we start tonight with the fight for New York's 23rd congressional district covering the southern tier of New York. And WENY-TV's news director Scott Cook joins us live from the Radisson Hotel in Corning, where Reed and his family and friends have gathered tonight. Scott. All right, JB, we have a very tight race here. It's like looking about 50-50 right now, but there are three very important counties with, with less than 50% reporting. That's Steuben, Allegheny, and Tioga. So it looks like uh, Tom Reed's campaign manager just came out and told the crowd that it looks very good, but Tom Reed is not going to make an acceptance speech until all the numbers are in. That's why we're out here in the hallway, and I'm joined right now by the congressman. And, Tom, did you expect this, this close race? Well, you know, we're, we're getting the numbers in as we speak, so we're cautiously optimistic, and, and the area that, to come in is uh, strong uh, for us. So uh, we're, we're excited, we're ready to go, and uh, ready to get to the finish line. Okay, let's say you pull this off. You, you've been touting in your campaign commercials your bipartisanship. Give, us, give me some examples of what you'll do to reach across the aisle in your next term. Well, we're going to continue to build on our record of having that reputation of uh, reaching across the aisle. You know, we work with fellow uh, right, people right here in western New York, Kathy Holkel, Brian Higgins, and folks like that uh, to really come together to advance the interests of this area. And we're going to keep doing that. Presidential race also very close right now. <laughs> we don't know who's going to be the president. If there's a Republican president, a Republican Congress, a Republican House, maybe even a Republican Senate. You still going to keep to that by partisanship? Uh, absolutely. I mean, these problems that face America uh, are significant, and it's going to take an, a, a united America to solve them so that these guys, these kids here, have a future in America that's great, and that's what we're going to work for. So you got a lot of people behind these closed doors right now <laughs> waiting for you to come out. You think this is going to happen in the next hour, half hour? I think we're getting to the end of the uh, the timeline here, and the finish line is right in sight. Okay, and if we do if we do get the final result, of course, we'll We'll be back live right now. We're going to send it back to you guys. All right, thank you so much. And Reed's challenger in Ishinagawa is up in Ithaca tonight, anxiously awaiting the results. We actually have Nate on the phone tonight to hear what's going on down in Ithaca. Nate. Good evening. Good evening. So we want to ask you, what's going on there in Ithaca? How do you feel about this whole night? Uh, I feel incredible. I mean, in, uh, look, according to our internal numbers that we're getting from the counties, it is a neck and neck race. I think that people are pretty shocked by how close this race is, considering the fact that Reed has outspent us, I think, four to one. Uh, but this really shows the power of our grassroots effort, and I feel confident about tonight. We've got a lot of absentee votes out there, especially in Tompkins counties, too. So if it's uh, within a couple thousand votes, uh, we'll have to probably wait and see what happens with those absentees in order to actually call this election. So I feel very good about the outcome. I mean, especially, I think it's because, you know, our message resonates. This is an election about fighting for the middle class. And I think Congressman Reed, he's shown from the millions that he's accepted, from the 600 political action committees that are corporate in nature, that, you know, he's not standing with the middle class, and we are. And I think that's why we're doing so well tonight. Nate, it's J.B. Buno here on the Late Edition. How you doing? I uh, just wanted to ask you how much it would mean regarding the fact that this is such a heavily Republican district. I mean, people really, there were a lot of people who didn't think that you stood a chance in this race, and here you are. It's neck and neck. It's so close. Uh, how does that How does that influence um, what's going on tonight? Well, I think that, you know, considering it's such a close race, I mean, whether we win or lose, this race has challenged the conventional wisdom uh, here in the southern tier and Finger Lakes of New York. I mean, we've shown folks that you could be a Democrat that fights or a progressive economic message about uplifting the middle class, helping them out, providing opportunities for the middle class, and asking the wealthiest Americans in this country to pay a little more to do that. Um, I think that that message has resonated across the district in Wellsville and Olean and Jamestown, and I think that's why we're doing so well uh, in this campaign so far. All right, and that's Democratic con Congressional Candidate Nate Shinagawa. Nate, thank you so very, very much. And All right, you're welcome. By, yes by WMY-TV political analyst Jim Twombly. Jim, you've been here with us for the whole <laughs> ride, and it comes down to tonight. Thank you so much for being here with us. My pleasure, my pleasure. It's a big, big night, and yesterday we were talking on the desk, same time that you predicted that Tom Reed was going to take it tonight. Do you still feel that way? 
Well, I'm, judging by the counties that are still not reporting from, uh, from Scott's report, those do seem to be some of the more heavily Republican counties in the district. So I'd say there's probably an advantage here for Reed in what's left to be counted. But, uh, you know, Shinigawa was right. If it gets down to just a few thousand votes, we're talking about the laborious process of counting pieces of paper. Um, and certainly we have, uh, you know, a, a count of that paper ballot that will go on for about a week or so. We might not know, but I'd have to say, given the counties that are out, the advantage here is to read. What would it say about Shinagawa if he pulls this out? I mean, how big of an upset are we talking about here locally? It would be huge. I mean, we never expected that Eric Massa would win against, uh, against Randy Cool, uh, and, and that was a shock. But everybody, you know, said, you know, well, Massa's a bit of a moderate in his military background. If Nate Shinagawa, who is more unabashedly progressive than Eric Massa was, uh, wins this race, then that says something perhaps about a changing demographic in this district. All right, let's shift gears. Let's talk about the presidential race. My goodness, it's all coming down to tonight, of course, and the results are pouring in with all of these projections. Uh, what's your take in terms of what you were expecting, Jim? Well, I mean, just before we went on air, uh, I checked, and the map doesn't look that much different from my map over the weekend. Um, it's coming down to Ohio, as everybody would have expected. Um, there were a few counties out in Ohio that tend to be blue counties in the t uh, Toledo and Cleveland area. Um, so we'll have to see. But if, if you know, a few hundred thousand votes that are predominantly blue, Ob uh, Obama was ahead in Ohio. So this could be over later on tonight. And I want to touch on the polls. There were predictions that the polls were going to be skewed, but that's not exactly accurate as of now. Can you touch on that? No, all night long it's, it's shown, at least as far as the presidential race is concerned, the polls were dead on. I mean, within the margins of error, um, if there are any deviations from it, they're very small. Um, and those small deviations in a close race can be quite meaningful. Um, one of the things we're seeing that's uh, looking like it's developing tonight in Florida is that late movement that we were talking about last night. It looks like Obama may have a shot at taking Florida as well. So, you know, the polls are accurate. Um, the allegations that they were skewed were just wishful thinking, I think. All right, Dr. Jim Twombly, don't you go anywhere. We're going to bring right you back here. later in the show for a little bit more analysis as the race develops. But first, we got to see what's going on in terms of our weather. Chief Meteorologist Joe Veris. Thank you, Joe. Voters in both states also cast a ballot in races for U.S. Senate today. In New York, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand is hoping for her first full six-year term. And in Pennsylvania, Senator Bob Casey is seeking a second term in office. It's, a, it's two races we've been covering here. WYTV's Renata Steele joins us live in the studio with the results. Renata, what can you tell us? That's right, JB. Both senators, Democrats, looking to hold off Republican challengers. Now, as you may know, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand was appointed to the Senate by former Governor David Patterson to fill the seat opened up when Hillary Clinton became Secretary of State. Now, she later went on to win an election to finish that term, and she'll now serve her first six-year term as New York's junior senator, beating a Republican challenger and New York City lawyer Wendy Long by a long shot. And in Pennsylvania, Democrat Bob Casey challenged by Republican Tom Smith. Incumbent Casey coming away with this one, boosted by a strong Democratic turnout in the state. Now, Casey first elected to the Senate in 2006. That was after defeating Republican Rick Santorum. Now, both Gillibrand and Casey reelected in states that went blue for this election, also voting for President Barack Obama. Now, we do know the GOP will remain in control of the House and Democrats hoping to hold on to their majority in the U.S. Senate. Live in the studio, Renata Steele, WENY TV News. Thank you very much, Renata. In the northern tier, there are two congressional seats up for grabs. Two incumbent Republicans are trying to stave off two challenging Democrats. That's right, and WENY TV's Candace Cole is with us in the studio with those results. Candace. Laura, the results for the 5th and 10th congressional districts in the northern tier are still being tallied. As of right now, Republican incumbent Glenn Thompson is beating out Democrat challenger Charles Dumas with 63% of the vote in the 5th district. This would make Thompson's third term in the House of Representatives. And currently, Congressman Tom Marino is in the lead for the seat in the 10th district, beating Democrat Philip Scolo by a 2 to 1 margin. Marino was first elected in, 20, in 2010, and this will make his second term in office. Now, those numbers are still coming in, but, but as for right now, this leaves the entire northern tier being represented by Republicans in the House. Live in the studio, Candace Cole, WENY-TV News.
All right, thank you so much, Candace. We turn now our attention to a local race. Republicans Ronald Swartz and Mike Skrosnick will serve as village trustees in Horseheads. Swartz has been a trustee since 2003. Both candidates were running for the only two open seats on the board. And there were several state politicians in New York and Pennsylvania up for re-election, but they enjoyed their election day running completely unopposed. In the New York State Senate, Senator Tom O'Mara ran unopposed, winning his second two-year term in Albany. He's going to represent the new 58th state district covering the Elmira Corning area. In the New York State Assembly, Chris Friend, Pil Phil Palmasano, and Barbara Lifton will all be returning for two more years. Friend represents part of Shemong and Schuyler counties, Palmasano, Steuben and Yates County, and Lifton, Tompkins, and Cortland counties. And let's move to Pennsylvania. There's one local race in the Pennsylvania State Senate. Incumbent Senator Gene Yaw is in the lead, looking like he will be returning for another four years if he goes on to defeat Democratic challenger Luana Cleveland, with a majority of counties reporting. Reporting, y'all was up 70 to 30 percent, according to the latest figures. Y'all represents Bradford County and a couple of others. And running unopposed was Pennsylvania State Senator Joe Scarnati, who will be back for four more years. Scarnati is the Senate's president pro tem, serving Tioga and Potter counties. And in the State House, Matt Baker and Tina Pickett are running unopposed, winning another two years. Baker represents Tioga County, while both Baker and Pickett serve portions of Bradford County. For all of tonight's election results and more, go to WENY.com. We're going to be updating the site throughout the night. Coming up, we're going to have more on the presidential race. We're going to bring you the latest projections and let you know who's in the lead for the race for the White House. And here's a look at tonight's Almanac page. Joe's full forecast right after the break. You're watching the late edition in high definition on WENY TV News. Ice warming trend as well. Get up into the lower 60s by early next week. Breaking news here at WENY TV News. President Obama will be spending four more years in the White House. The major networks are calling it. It's looking like it's going to be four more years of Democratic President Obama. And we're going to be joined now, of course, once again, by our political analyst, Jim Twombly. Jim, you have been scary right throughout this entire <laughs> process. You, it looks like Ohio is going to be going to President Obama, and that might seal the deal. And there are a handful of states out there that might tally up to 290, which is what I said was Obama's floor. Um, there's still the possibility that Florida could switch and go to Obama, which would put him between the floor and the ceiling that I was talking about yesterday, between 290 and 332. All right, Jim, you are on point. I got to say, what will Obama's second term as president look like? Well, I, you know, it, a lot of it depends now on Congress. I mean, this is the term, too, that presidents like to use to make history. Um, they turn, begin to turn to foreign affairs. So you may see more of an effort on the part of President Obama in terms of trying to settle the Iran uh, situation or, or peace in the Middle East or some other initiative. So there's going to be a big role for whoever the Secretary of State is. And there's also talk that perhaps Hillary Clinton now may stay on. And part of that is fueled by the speculation that John Kerry was going to be her replacement. And there's fear that Scott Brown might run and win that seat. And the Democrats don't want that. So there's a possibility that we might see Hillary Clinton back for at least part of the, the second term. I have to say, this really reminds me of 2008. Uh, there were a lot of people who were saying that it was going to be a neck-and-neck -neck race between President o or then Barack Obama, who, you know, was senator from Illinois, against Senator uh, John McCain. And then it turned out to just be a lot less close than, you know, analysts had predicted. But it looks like here we are again. President Obama, he might, he's going to win Ohio, it looks like, and he might even win Florida. And that would put him way beyond 290, correct? Well, it would put him over 300 and it would be within right. that range I said of 290 floor and, and 332 ceiling um, probably not winning Virginia at this point um, but who knows I mean it's still razor close um, the the difference in this race in 2008 is 2008 it was close at the outset and once the financial crisis hit that was really the beginning of the slow avalanche uh, in favor of Obama this one it was back and forth Obama looked like he had a big lead and then the first debate happened then Romney eked ahead, and then Hurricane Sandy. Uh, so I think there are a number of events here that uh, Mitt Romney is going to wake up tomorrow morning and regret. And one of them is 
the Jeep ad in Ohio that backfired on him. Sure, yeah. Uh, and the fact that Hurricane Sandy hit New Jersey and made Chris Christie look like Barack Obama's ally and made the two of them look like they were bipartisan. And also, 47% comments can't underrate those as well. well yeah, right? but I mean, at, at, the, at the close, those are the events at the close, but certainly the 47% comment, uh, Sarah Palin was talking earlier tonight um, about how the uh, Obama ads about Bain Capital um, had undermined uh, uh, Romney's uh, credibility early on. So a lot of things happened, but in the very end, you gotta look at uh, you know, that hurricane. Right. That's the big factor. All right, and uh, just really quick, what do you really foresee any changes in these next four years? Well, I mean, usually you see some cabinet changes. And as I said, you know, there's some talk now that Hillary Clinton might stay on, right. uh, possibly because of the political considerations in Massachusetts, odd, oddly enough. Um, you might see some of the cabinet officers say, okay, I've had enough, it's time to move on. That's typical. Um, again, the emphasis might be more in foreign affairs than in domestic now. Uh, and that might lead to a little bit more bipartisanship in Congress because the Congress usually gives the president a little bit more leeway when it comes to foreign affairs. And it looks like the House is going to control. The House is still going to be in the hands of the Republicans, yep. um, maybe by a slightly larger margin. That one, um, a lot of people were off on um, a number of House races. More money played a more important role there than it did in the presidential. Uh, but the Democrats may actually strengthen their position in the Senate. They're not going to be filibuster proof. But you're going to have to look at things like, are the Democrats still going to want to be led by Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. after two straight losses? All right. Thank you very much, Jim. If you're just joining us here on the late edition, once again, President Obama, it looks like it's going to be four more years in the White House. Dr. Jim Twombly, thank you so much for being here with us on the late edition. We're going to try to bring you the very latest once again from Corning with WMY TV News Director Scott Cook, and we'll continue very soon. Welcome back to the Late Edition. Now, the winner has not been named in the race between Tom Reed and Nate Shinagawa, but we've been, heard, we've been hearing that the race is neck and neck. Really close here tonight. WNYTV News Director is in Corning at the Radisson Hotel, and now he joins us live with the very latest. Scott. All right, as you can hear, we are live at the Corning Radisson, and Tom Reed has just wrapping up his acceptance speech. He has declared victory in this race for the 23rd Congressional District. He tells us that uh, he, he has not received a call from Nate Shinagawa yet, but he's had people working very hard in the field, and they tell him that this race is locked up. I'm looking at the boards now. There's about 98% of the vote has been counted, and Reed has a lead of 113,000 to 107,000 votes. We're going to do our best to get to the Congressman. It doesn't look like we're going to get there before the end of the show, but this race has been declared won by Tom Reed. And right now, we're going to send it back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Scott. Here we are calling the race neck and neck, yeah. and it's called for Congressman Tom Reed. Congressman Tom Reed will be representing the newly drawn 23rd Congressional District. Nate Shinagawa of Tompkins County really gave Congressman Tom Reed a ride for his money. Uh, but it's looking like Tom, Congressman Tom Reed is declaring victory tonight. We've been covering this race, Laura, you and we I, have. for quite a bit here. And it's here. been quite a night. I feel like it, breaking news right there with yep. Scott earlier during the commercial break. We heard that various news outlets had called Obama the winner. So yep. it's been quite a whirlwind, but it's been a, a great race. And really, everybody. it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, everybody out there who's been watching with us. Once again, President Obama in the White House for another four years. Congressman Tom Reed will be representing the Southern Tier in Congress what a night it's been, but of course, we're going to stay true to WNY TV roots, and we can't go without sending it over to Chief Meteorologist Joe Varis for a look at this? our forecast. Of course, yeah, quick one. we always have time for weather. All right, let's do a quick bus stop forecast, All right. and how about that? A chilly start to our Wednesday morning. We'll have to bundle the kids up, mostly cloudy skies, temperature 23 degrees. We hit 44 for the 5-degree guarantee. Could see a couple flurries tomorrow night. That'll be the biggest impact from that nor'easter, at least for us here in the Twin Tiers. Look at that nice warm up as we go towards the weekend. And looking at temperatures getting very close to 60 by early next week. All right, thank you very much, Joe, from everyone here. WYTV News, all the reporters who helped out tonight, everybody in the back, Director uh, Randy Phillips, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great night. Good night.